I'm not done unpacking, so I'm trying to see how much the apartment you can and can't see with the camera here. The boxes are saying, so that'll do. Hello. This is also a friend's sweater, but it's the only thing that I own that's not currently wrinkled for the move, so that's what we're going with. Hey everyone, it's been a minute since I posted. I have a couple new subscribers, so I thought I would do a talking video. No one asked for this. No one wanted it. Um, and I'm not Jason from Grainy Days or Matt, but uh, we're gonna try. We're gonna see where it takes us. So despite living in New York for three years, I've never been to Coney Island in the summer. And honestly, my first awareness of it came from Brooklyn, that book by Colm Tobin. It's probably not how you say his very Irish name, sorry. But I'd never been to Coney Island in the summer. I'd been in the winter because I love the city and can't stay away, but I hadn't been over the summer. I decided to go where there wouldn't be a lot of people. I was in a mask. I knew everyone would be socially distanced. And that's what I did. I never really know what to do with the first couple exposures in a roll of film. So I definitely stood here on this subway platform and took two or three shots and hoped that I wasn't wasting a ton of the rest of the roll. Personally, I feel as though amusement parks, county fairs, carnivals all exist on a separate pane of reality that's not quite mortal. And the fact that the Coney Island amusement park was shut down because of COVID really emphasized that. It really came through. It was very isolated and kind of dramatic to be separated from everything. Definitely took a picture through a chain link fence of the American flag, which honestly felt like a metaphor. This one looked a little happier because it was from the boardwalk, so you had a more positive view. And then of course we got a close up of the Wonder Wheel. With the sky and the colors of it, honestly, it ended up looking like some stock photo you find on Pinterest. But there's something kind of gratifying in that and taking a picture that you know other people have taken before you. I figure something must be good about it. I really did like the overtones of blue that came in. I don't know if I'm at a point yet where I can talk about these are the rules I used and this is the exposure and everything because I'm still very much learning. That being said, the blues from this roll just came through so prettily. It's very happy. Honestly, it's a little patriotic because you got the red and the white and the blue and the stars, so love that. First picture of the sea. I love the movement of it. I tried to not catch a family in it because I felt a little intrusive. This is from the pier looking down actually, so I'm surprised that I zoomed in this much. There's our wide shot. We love the beach. We love the sea. I also do like it when a picture could look you be a puzzle. And I feel like with this one, you have the three people in the sea. You have the kids in the corner digging in the sand. That's very much an element you would get of a kind of folksy Americana puzzle. I took a lot of very similar pictures of the pier. No explanation. I just did. In my defense, this is not my finger. This is a pole that I leaned through to get this picture. There were some pigeons that were flapping around and apparently, obviously, I missed them. But that was the, the vision for this shot. We still like the waves. We still like the pillars. It worked, just not as well as I'd hoped. A seagull. I took a couple of the same seagull because I just love the motion of them. Sometimes you take pictures because you're kind of obligated to, and this is one of them. COVID 2020. I stood at these rocks for literally 20 minutes. A lifeguard came over and asked if he could help me because I was just trying to figure out how to capture the wave breaking over the rocks. I don't think I did it, varying degrees of success, but I just, I love a breaking wave. It's so pretty. 
the antithesis of the waves breaking over those rocks was this little, little tiny wave that could not get to this half submerged rock. This little bird, I don't remember what they're called. We call them kiwis in California, but I don't think that's what they're called on this coast. He was just chilling. He was sitting with me the whole time I took all these pictures and that, I felt like I made a friend. Shooting underneath the pier was honestly much more complicated than I thought. The light was not my favorite to get because it was so bright outside. You can see on the right hand here and then underneath it was so dark. And again, there was all of these elements of the waves hitting the different pillars, supports, not quite sure what those are called, legs of the pier. It hit them all differently. This is what we got. I was one of those kids that would run along the pier and or run along the beach after the waves came in and tried to find a couple shells and this really reminded me of that. There weren't as many as you'd get at a more open beach as opposed to an inlet, but still pretty. Another seagull friend. He was chilling. He like posed for a couple pictures. This is one that came out the best. I don't know if this couple made that sign line in the stand behind them, but they were just sitting there with their feet in the water. It was very peaceful and I thought that was a nice way to spend a Sunday. That's it. I don't know what else to say. I wish I had funny commentary or really commentary in general, but if you like this video as opposed to the other ones, let me know. I can shut up. We can also not have me talk over the videos and the pictures I've taken. That is an option, but I figured it was high time I post something. I have a couple more backlog. I need to figure out how I want to do them, if I want to do a voiceover, if I want to just show the pictures themselves. Let me know.